you're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. In this video, we will uh, do a walkthrough and review the updates, bug fixes, and new features in the desktop UI or web front end for the IMSA 8080 ESP replica and Kremenko Z1 replicas from the high nibble. What you can see right now is a screen capture from uh, the, the main attraction, the new Tektronix 4014 uh, vector graphics terminal emulation. But there are a few other features of the desktop UI that we should review before we get stuck into the Tektronix. So let's just quickly walk through those. Uh, small bug fixes, if you are in the tape library, uh, you may not know, but you can rename uh, tapes and by double clicking on the tape name and if you start to type and change your mind uh, you can hit the escape key and it will revert to the original name. Uh, there was also a bug in this that if you did make a change uh, you tended to get an error dialog popping up because it attempted to rename the file twice. The first time actually succeeded, this was the second time that failed uh, producing the false negative uh, error. And uh, something to bear in mind is if you do change the name then you can uh, commit that change by hitting enter or simply clicking away from the name or from the tape and that name, uh, the name of the file is updated. Other changes are in the uh, teletype device. Uh, by default, uh, and this has always been the case, you'll notice this little keyboard icon on the title bar is white. That means that the uh, key mappings are enabled for effectively word star mode where arrow keys and keys like page up and down produce word star um, key combinations to navigate. Uh, if you turn that off by clicking on it you get uh, some native VT100, 102, 220 style key mappings. But the WordStar key mappings have now been harmonized with the hardware-based VT132 terminal emulation um, because they were previously different and uh, it makes more sense for them to be the same. Uh, the full key mappings are documented in the release notes uh, that will be made available with this desktop update. Everything else is predominantly a new feature, so let's quickly take a look at the uh, system and you can see that at the moment the web front end is in fact a beta. That beta was put out uh, in the last week of February 2023 and in March 2023 it will become the production build for all new um, kits that are shipping with uh, the new firmware that will be released in March as well. Let's get on to the new features. The first one is um, 132 column mode for the TTY device. So let's boot into CPM. And to demonstrate this, I have my SuperCalc disk mounted in drive C. So we'll switch over to that and fire up SuperCalc. Now straight out of the box, SuperCalc is enabled um, to put the terminal into 132 column mode but you do have to go and run let me just quickly show you uh, what comes on the supercalc disk you do have to run the install program and let it know that you want to actually display the f uh, and work in full 132 column mode which i've already done so when we run supercalc 2 you will see the terminal uh, compresses the fonts horizontally, so it doesn't make the window bigger. It uses uh, uh, horizontal scaling uh, to get 132 column mode. And if we load a file, you'll see the full effect of 132 column mode. If we leave SuperCalc, you may have noticed while all of that was happening that this little um, glyph of a T with a horizontal width um, arrow underneath it lit up when SuperCalc went into 132 column mode. So in that case, the program's un in control and it's using standard DEC VT terminal um, escape sequences to switch in and out of 132 column mode. 
Of course, you can do that manually. So if we just get something to look at on the screen, like a directory, we can use this button on the window title bar simply to switch in and out of 132 column mode. All right, well, onto the main attraction, the Tektronix 14, a 4014 vector graphics terminal emulation. You can see the new icon on the desktop when we open that. Straight up, the first thing to note and most important is in fact that this device does not have its own WebSocket. It doesn't make its own connection to the IMSE. It effectively, you can think of it as if it's plugged into the auxiliary port on the TTY or VT100 terminal. So the plug icon has a slightly different meaning. If it's green, then it's ready to go online under the control of the TTY device. If it's red, it's in local mode. In other words, it will ignore all data sent to it and it uh, has a local echo from the keyboard enabled. So in fact, now that we're in local mode, I can type some text and you can see that that's just echoing on the screen. Uh, a couple of things you need to know here is that uh, the Tektronix had a very standard ASCII keyboard with only a few extra keys. Uh, there's a, a, you'll notice in the manual, which we'll have a look at shortly, reference to a page key. It effectively clears the screen and that's mapped to page up. Um, there is a line feed key and I've mapped that to page down. So if we hit page down, we get line feed. Backspace is backspace. Delete is rub out or ASCII 127. And the only other key is that the Tektronix had a reset key, often referred to in the manual as shift reset. And that is on shift page up because in fact it was um, the shifted page key on the Tektronix. While we're here, it's also, uh, oh, let's have a quick look at the manual because in local mode, uh, there's something that you might want to try in the manual. If we switch over to the PDF documentation, um, and I thoroughly recommend you have at least one read of this so you know how to operate your new Tektronix 4014. Um, but if you've zipped down to page, um, I think it's 37, um, it's on about page 35 in chronological or in uh, regular page order. Yeah, page 37 where it gives you the overview of all the various modes of the Tektronix terminal. This is actually a walkthrough that you can use to verify the various functions. And you can, if you're in local mode, you can follow the direct directions on these pages and type in their examples and see what happens. So uh, if we just step through a few of those, there's about 12 pages worth of these and they exercise the alpha, alpha mode, the graphics mode, um, and what they call the GIN mode, which is the graphical input mode, which gives you a crosshair and lets you locate um, the cursor on the screen. So about 12 pages of that, and um, you can walk through that if you're in local mode. Switching back to the terminal, let's see this in action. So we'll put it online. Uh, I will actually use the extra glyph on the TTY window frame to enable the tech terminal. So doing that hands uh, control over to the tech terminal. So now I have the command prompt appearing here. And if we get a directory, just keep it simple. Now this is a persistent phosphor screen. So you'll notice that if I back up and retype, we're typing over ourselves. So bear that in mind, um, that's what the page key is useful for, is clearing the screen regularly. Uh, if we get a directory on the screen, this is the default font size, and under escape sequence control, the Tektronix can select from four different font sizes. But if you're using it as a terminal, it might be convenient um, to change the font size manually. That's what this T with the vertical height arrow next to it does on the system tray. So you can see this cursor just shrank so the next time I type directory will be in the next font down. And again, click it again, we're on the third font size. And then finally, and this will 
scroll to the second half of the screen uh, we're on the smallest font size and this behavior is standard for the Tektronix terminal uh, it's to give you the chance to potentially uh, display more text on the screen it sort of breaks the page into two halves um, but if it's starting to get cluttered you've got no option but to hit the page key and return to the top left corner of the screen a feature that I've borrowed from a um, future Tektronix device, the 4051 series or 4050 series of um, computers that had the same persistent phosphor display, is that they uh, used a red phosphor in addition to the green for non-persistent graphics. So you'd be looking at this screen thinking, if it's a persistent phosphor, how can we have a, class, a, fl a flashing cursor? Well, the text is being written to the persistent phosphor layer, but a lower energy beam is producing the cursor, and that fades, just like it would on an oscilloscope screen. And the 4050 series had red phosphor for the non-persistent -persist layer. You can enable that kind of emulation by clicking on the little paint drop icon here, and now any non-persistent elements will appear in red, as they did on the 4050 series. There's a few other little cosmetic tweaks that I've included behind this mode as well, just so that you can see the different operating modes of the Tektronix. We'll stick with monochrome for now. Of course, features uh, that we're getting used to on the desktop user interface, uh, such as being able to use um, on a Mac and um, right down to a ridiculously small size, up to a reasonably large size. And if we want to get back to normal sort of 100% scale, you can double click in the window or you can um, use this sort of return arrow up on the system uh, on the edge of the window and it'll take you back to 100%. And uh, you can also go full screen. So full screen will um, zoom up to maximize to occupy the full screen. And command enter or control enter on Windows will go back to a windowed mode. Right, well, let's finally get the Tektronix doing what it does best and plotting some graphics. Uh, there's a sample disk provided with the uh, beta update, and I have that currently mounted on drive D. So let me switch back to the VT100, and we'll switch to drive D and have a look at the files we get. So all the .plt or plot files are uh, example Tektronix graphics displays. Plot.com is a great little utility uh, that one of our community members, Neil, aka the Shadow Shadowtron blog, has produced, um, and it just makes displaying plot files that much simpler. If we were to do it manually, we would have to, for example, um, go to the Tektronix, hit the page up key to clear the page, head back to VT100, we would prepare to type a file such as um, 01.plot and then of course this is going to still show on the VT100 so we'd have to hit the glyph to get it to switch to the Tektronix, come over here and then finally hit enter to display the plot and of course we get the command prompt showing up on the tech window. So to save all of those steps, uh, Neil made this great utility, we can just drive everything from uh, the VT100 and we can simply say things like plot um, and a file name. Oop, let's type that properly. And it will take care of switching to the Tektronix, uh, plotting the file and then reverting back to the VT100. But you'll notice in this case, it didn't clear the screen by default. That's okay. Neil's included some useful flags in the plot command. And as soon as the plot's finished, uh, we'll show you how you can do that. In fact, uh, we'll use one of the other really neat features of plot. And we can ask it to plot all the files in this directory. And using option flags, we can get it to clear the screen between plots. We could even get it to loop if we wanted a sort of long-running slideshow. Doesn't matter, we can set that. 
um, we can have it um, print out messages on the VT100 as it plots each file. Uh, we can add a delay between each plot. So there's many options, um, and all you have to do is type plot without anything else on the command line, and it will give you some built-in help reminding you of all the options. But if we do that, you'll notice it gets to work and clears the screen on the tech terminal, does each plot, has a little delay, clears and clears the screen before the next plot. So very handy if you want to sort of walk through a slideshow of plot files that you've accumulated. Now if you're looking carefully, you'll notice that as the plots are made, there is a little sort of flare at the leading edge of where it's writing on the screen that simulates the sort of higher energy at the leading edge of the uh, beam on as it wrote into the phosphor for the persistent display. And then that fades away quite quickly. If we go into the um, pseudo color mode, you'll notice that the leading edge of the beam actually looks yellow. That simulates the fact that it's writing to the red phosphor as well as the green phosphor, but the red phosphor is fading away. If And um, I've got an even better dem uh, file to demonstrate that um, what's called write-through mode, where it doesn't write to the persistent phosphor, but only to the layer that fades. So let's uh, do a command C and break out of this slideshow. Um, notice when you do command C, you do drop into the uh, alpha mode on the tech. So if you want to get control back on the VT100, you need to click the glyph to change modes. And uh, I've just accumulated a couple of other plot files on my hard disk. And as I say, this one I think is a good demonstration of the um, non-persistent phosphor. So let's have a go at showing, oh, not shop, but ship. Let's go back and fix that. We will get it to clear, clear the screen between plots. Uh, we'll loop, we'll have a small delay. And here it goes. So you can see that uh, a, much of what's appearing on the screen is persistent. However, the, uh, the sort of uh, sweeping arm of the radar is non-persistent. And if we go into the pseudo color mode, you'll see that's plotted exclusively in red as if it's hitting the red phosphors um, on the later tech models. And so you can very easily differentiate um, between the persistent phosphor layer and the non-persistent phosphor. There are you know, many other features of the Tektronix vector terminal. In fact, it's capable of displaying uh, a gray scale or really green scale, um, high resolution photos. This implementation is limited to run at only 1024 by 780 pixels. Um, it can read plot files for um, 4096 by 3120 plots, but it simply downscales them to this resolution. Um, just didn't seem necessary to go to the ultra high resolution, given that m most people are going to be viewing this on something less than a 4K screen. Um, it wouldn't be hard to adapt it to go full 4K as the original uh, Tektronix 4014 was able to do back in 1974. Imagine that, a 4K graphics display uh, 50 years ago. All right, well, that concludes the kind of whirlwind tour through the new features of the desktop UI. Um, as I mentioned, this is available as a beta as of the last week of February 2023, and will end and will go production during the course of the month of March. So enjoy and uh, give me your feedback uh, via the forum.